what does that mean for relationships of leadership in the world? When we ask people to define leadership, they normally say something consistent with the idea of achieving a result through people. The intent of that statement is clearly to take. The implication is that people are the means. Now, if I'm using you as a means to achieve something from you, clearly I'm out to get something from you. So the current take on leadership is that they are there to get things out of subordinates. If you ask people intuitively to construct an ideal boss, they will say a boss who's kind, who's approachable, who listens, who's supportive, who's honest, who's fair, and who gives me an opportunity to learn. What you get is a huge bag of words, but there are synonyms in that bag, and you can distill them to two core themes. The first is concerned with care. What the subordinate is actually saying to the boss is, have a genuine interest in me, don't just be in this relationship to get something out of me care about me. But then there's a harder theme. If you're looking for someone who's honest, they won't always be nice. Sometimes they'll say things that are upsetting. The reason why you want the honesty is because it helps you to understand where you are and what you can learn and therefore how you can grow. So the two themes that come out of this ideal boss is care and growth. These themes are universal. We found them from Japan among employees in gold mines in South Africa, in military organizations, wherever you go, every human being on the planet says, the boss I work for because I want to, cares for me sincerely, and gives me an opportunity to grow. If you work for somebody because you really want to, because they do all those things for you, if that person asks you to do something, you'll probably do it, which means you give that person the right to ask you to do something or to exercise power over you which suggests that these criteria of care and growth are the universal criteria for legitimate power. The first relationship of power you have with another person in your life is with your parents. And there are two people in that relationship. There's a big one and there's a little one. The job of the big one for the little one is very specific. It's care and growth. In other words, the job of the big one for the little one in any relationship of power is care and growth. Now that requires a shift in the intent of the boss from the big one, from being here to get something out of the subordinate to being here to give something to the subordinate. What care and growth requires of people in command relationships is that they invert how they view their jobs. Their role isn't to achieve a result through people. Their role, and it sounds bizarre, is to achieve people through results. And very often people in executive positions say you've just left the planet, you're smoking your socks, and that doesn't make sense. If you think about it, however, that's exactly what a good coach does. A bad coach walks to a team and says, my job as a coach is to achieve a result, and I'm going to use you, Mr. Athlete, as my resource to do that. In fact, it is the athlete's job to produce a result. The coach's job is to care for the athlete and to grow the athlete. That doesn't mean to say that the coach loses interest in the job. Clearly, he watches what happens on the field and what happens on the scoreboard because those things are his job. Those things are his means to do his job, which is to coach the athlete. He literally uses the job as the means whereby he produces an athlete. His product is an athlete. Until people in command relationships, whether it's in the state, whether it's in corporates, whether it's in enterprises, understand that their product is the people working for them, we will stay in crisis. We will continue to turn the forest into chopsticks. We'll continue killing off frogs in Canada. We'll continue eating up this big cheese we're sitting on until there's nothing left. We have to change this insanity of thinking that self-interest is the way to pursue our well-being as a species. The pursuit of self-interest destroys you as an individual. It destroys the groups that you're working in, and it completely undermines the legitimacy of relationships of power in any establishment.